the um, introduction, and I'd just like to open by uh, adding my words of thanks and congratulations to Leslie for making this event happen, in, and also for her rigorous scholarship on uh, medieval treasuries and ensuring that they've received the scholarly wider attention that they so richly um, deserve. It's my pleasure to have known her. Uh, since I started the course a little bit 10 years ago and to have um, been on a scholarly journey together with her. So anyway, to this is at hand, uh, if I can get the keyboard to work. Uh, there we go. Right. Here you can see uh, the ruins of Battle Abbey emerging through the mists of time. It was here in 1535 that Dr. Richard Layton Commissioner of Thomas Cromwell arrived at a key stage of the suppression of the monasteries. It was there to, to um, inventory the contents of the sacristy and to assess the moral character of the monks. And I think it's fair to say that he wasn't impressed by what he found. He condemned the revestry as the worst and poorest that is. Its contents, a few decaying vestments valued at a mere 20 shillings were condemned as evil. And the abbot and the brethren were branded as the blackest sort of devilish monks. It's all the kind of stuff that's familiar to anybody who's studied the English Reformation and the suppression of the monasteries. It's very much helped to construct this kind, uh, the enduring kind of uh, historiographical tradition. Well, it is one way of looking at it. But it's difficult to square Leighton's damning word with sources provided by uh, uh, Battle Abbey itself, including the monastery's own financial accounts. Those of the sacrists, which run from the late 14th century to the eve of suppression, show them a sustained investment in the fabric of the church and the contents of the vestries. Let's give you a few examples. Shortly before Dr. Leighton's visit, when Thomas Broiderer was employed for 72 days to mend vestments. An altar cross cost a substantial sum of eight pounds was purchased from London. The money was also dispersed on the repair of chalices and candlesticks, patterns, censers and the like. Now Julian Luxford showed that patronage of exactly this sort of thing was evidence of the spiritual health of Benedictine monasticism in Western England. In the, in the last century to fall suppression. Now I'd argue that the accounts of battle likewise speak of the sustained spiritual vitality of the monastery. The monks were taking care to invest in the vestments and altar virgins required for the performance of liturgy, the dignified celebration of which was at the very heart of the Benedictine way of life. Now, valuable evidence of the religious life of the monks at is provided by an unpublished inventory of 175 saints' relics present at the monastery in the mid uh, 15th century. And that's going to be the focus of my talk today. I'll explain how it's possible to determine how the Abbey obtained at least some of the relics in the inventory, and this will explain why the, there were such miserable relics in the royal collection and the, uh, the Jeremy was speaking about earlier. I'm liking a lot of them were probably a battle. Thank you for the uh, setting me up there, Jeremy. Uh, evidence of battle's uh, relationship with its royal founder, William the Conqueror, and how this relationship was sustained at least into the early 13th century. The inventory adds significantly to our understanding of the spirituality of the monks, most obviously the cult of St. Relics, but also their religious self-identity. The also the Abbey's liturgy, pilgrimage, the monastery's relationship with the wider English, indeed European church. And it also provides some gleanings, just gleanings, about the material riches of the monastery. And I think this is especially important as there's virtually no surviving physical evidence in terms of plate and such out uh, from the monastery. So anyway, the inventory. It's now at the Huntington Library, San Marino, California, where it's been since uh, the early 20th century. And it covers the rectos and verses of two folios. And the battle of provenance is uh, explicit. The ex libris inscription on the top shows that the inventory entered the uh, monastery's library during the abbey of John Newton, and he was elected in 1463, dying in 1490. And it then opens with the words and translation, these are the names of the saints whose relics are kept here in battle. Now, before his election to the abbey, 
Newton served as the monastery's salary. And it appears that the inventory was at the very least in the possession of, or possibly even drawn up by a predecessor. That's Thomas Bird, who occupied the office between 1436 and 1438, and whose signature is shown there, appended at its end. Now, the inventory is in Latin, and it's written in a neat bookhand. Each page has two columns, each ruled with their 26 lines, and it appears to be the work of a single scribe. It follows, at least to begin with, a standard hierarchical arrangement found in all the Alraic inventories. So we have the relics of Christ, followed by those of the Virgin, the Archangels, John the Baptist, the Apostles, Martyrs, Confessors, and the Virgins. However, this convention breaks down around about there. And, the, um, and thereafter it becomes much, much less predictable. In the final third or so of the total, they don't have any discernible order. And, and I'll get to the significance of that presently. And there is quite an array of relics. There are those of Christ's life and passion. There are portions of clothing of the Virgin and other saints. We have the hair and beard of various saints, including the apostles uh, Peter, Paul, and Andrew. And there are body parts, including the finger of St. George, the arm of St. Wolfram, the jaw and the thirteen teeth of St. Bridget, and a, and a joint of St. Giles, which when I was originally transcribing, I thought, but does that say Micturum? I thought, no, no, that, that's too weird, even from the ladies. <laughs> um, now we also have the, the, the dust and flesh of, of, of some saints as well, and there are various bits of holy ground. Now many of these relics can be found in most other English medieval lists, but there are some especially interesting or rare ones which I'll comment on in, 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 in the course of the, of the talk. I get a little bit of context. As I'm sure you all know, Battle Abbey was founded by William the Conqueror, most probably in 1070, as a penance of the bloodshed associated with the conquest, and also as a memorial to his great victory in 1066. Sources from within living memory of the battle make clear that it was founded on the very site where uh, William had won his great victory over Harold, the last Anglo Saxon king. Now, relics played a very important part in a number of key events in the conquest and the early history of the monastery. And in the interest of time, I'll just uh, focus on the latter. According to the Abbey's late 12th century chronicler, chronicle, rather, the conqueror made a deathbed gift of innumerable relics to battle, and these are described as coming from the treasury of the Anglo-Saxon kings. Now, comparison with late Anglo-Saxon relics to the known royal donor does indeed suggest that it is plausible that many of the relics at battle were given by the conqueror. Exeter Cathedral had an extensive collection of relics, the gift of King Athelstan in 930. Significantly, these are known to have been in the king's treasury. A contemporary document describing that these relics were, that the, the, um, the, the, the treasury contained the king's earthly treasure and the most valuable treasures of all holy relics. An inventory of Athelstan's gift appears in the Mystical of Bishop Leothric, that's 1050 to 72, shown here. And there are indeed quite a number of similarities between the Battle and Exeter lists. At least 38 saints' relics appear in both inventories. The pre-conquest monastery of Waltham, as uh, later been shown there, had an important collection of relics, many of the donation of King Harold. Again, there are affinities between the uh, battle and Waltham list. I think there were 85 relics um, were, uh, were present at the time of, of Harold's uh, gift. And there are about 50 of these are in common with the battle inventory. But I need to be careful here. It's the case with both the Exeter and uh, Waltham lists that those that are in common with the battle so that are those of, of, of saints common in most um, many inventories, those of early Roman martyrs and popes. And it's quite striking the number of Frankish saints, actually. But we're on firmer ground when we get to the later gift of royal relics to the Abbey. An annal from battle recalled in 1200 King John visited. Abbey. He marked the occasion with a gift of a valuable vessel and relics of the Lord's sepulchre and a portion of the true cross, which his brother King John had acquired when crusading the Holy Land. 
Now, there was intense devotion to the Holy Sepulchre in Richard's army. And of course, he never reached the uh, uh, Jerusalem of the Holy Places, the Crusaders stopping a few miles short of the Mount Joy. But the near contemporary chronicler, Ralph McCullough's Hall, recalls Richard ransoms from Saladin, relics from the Holy Sepulchre, and other churches in Jerusalem, and also that he acquired a portion of the True Cross. Now, relics of the True Cross occur on two separate occasions at both times in the tradition of the sepulchre within the inventory. The first, following well-established convention, is at the beginning, but the second is towards the end in the section of the uh, list that lacks any clear hierarchy. And it's plausible, at least, to suggest that this entry may well be the gift of King John. I must say that, uh, unlike a lot of uh, medieval inventories, um, we don't have to know given a single one of these relics. Thank you very much, John Newton, or uh, whoever drew it up. Anyway, there are other relics in the inventory that can only have been acquired well after the death of Tomper. Close to the end is a, a, a relic of bone of the head of St. Thomas of Canterbury, obviously Thomas Beckett murdered in his cathedral of Christ Church at the hour of our Vespers on the afternoon of the 29th of December, 1170. Now there was a contemporary connection between uh, Bethel and Christ Church that could well explain the presence of this uh, rally. Odo, prior of Christ Church at the time of Beckett's assassination, was elected abbot of Bethel in 1175. He brought with him to his new monastery a book describing the miracles attributed to Beckett. It doesn't at all seem unreasonable to suggest that he was also the source of Battle's relic, uh, prestigious relic of the martyred archbishop. And this is especially believable as other monks present at the monastery at the time of the saint's murder played a key role in propagating his cult and disseminating his relics, especially to other English Benedictine houses. To continue the theme of later acquisitions, five entries after Beckett is a relic of Richard of Chichester who died in 1253 and canonised nine years later. Now, Battle was in the Diocese of Chichester, so Richard was very much a local boy than the same. And relics of Beckett and Richard were not that uncommon. Indeed, in many respects, the Battle Inventory represents a typical English Benedictine relic collection. A hundred, hundred or so of the relics um, can be found in those of other English Benedictine houses. But despite this, the inventory provides some very interesting evidence concerning the religious identity and spirituality of monks. Battle's founding community of monks came from Mahmoudia at Tour. And this is his greatest saint of Pots Martin, Roman soldier turned monk and bishop, and the battle was dedicated to the same. The Abbey's Chronicle tells how during the reign of Abbot Walter de Lacey, that's in 1139 to 71, the monastery glittered with frequent miracles so that the merits of St. Martin might be declared abroad. And he was clearly of lasting significance to the identity of the monks. You can see um, his image, because in the, the, uh, his cloak of the beggar, in the canopied niche above the um, final abbot on the canon there, the seal. And you won't be surprised to learn that uh, there's a relic of Martin in the inventory. It occurs on the second page between relics of Pope Gregory the Great, an apostle of the English, and St. Swithin, a, a great English Anglo Saxon bishop of Winchester. So it's sandwiched between those of two poor confessor saints. Battle had a dependent priory at Exeter, founded in 1087, and from the outset it had its own important collection of relics. Now, it was dedicated to St. Nicholas, 4th century Bishop of Myra in modern Turkey, and he was obviously universally venerated. Now, his relics were translated to Bari as the at the end of the 11th century, and Battle possessed a number of Nicholas's relics. They occur on two separate occasions in the inventory. The first, his napkin, sackcloth, occur early on in the list devoted to confessor saints. And then later on, they occur again as a bone of his finger and his oil. And it could well be the case that these were uh, obtained at the time of his translation. Indeed, an animal from the abbey recalls this event. Moreover, a life of Nicholas and a, and a detailed description of the translation have been written in verse form in a hand of around about 1100 to the same manuscript containing the animal. 
Now, um, Battle also had a cell at Brecon, um, which is now Brecon Cathedral, which was then dedicated to St. John the Evangelist. Now, there is, perhaps surprisingly, there were no relics of uh, John the Evangelist uh, in the inventory. However, the Priory of Brecon is likely to have been battle, the source of battles relic of St. Almeida, a 5th, 6th century virgin martyr from Brecon. Bernard, Bishop of St. David, between 1115 and 48, made a personal grant to the Priory of a chapel dedicated to the same. This chapel, in very close proximity to the Priory, was the site of a holy well, and according to the Chronicle of Gerard of Wales, it was a focus of pilgrimage for Galatians, and that miraculous cures there were attributed to Almeida. Now, several other early British saints also feature prominently in the inventory, including Samson and Petrock, whose relics were at numerous sites in Western England, including Glastonbury Abbey in Somerset and ancient Benedictine Foundation. And Battle also possessed relics of some British saints that are not found in any other uh, English inventories. These include Deckerman, a Welsh missionary to Somerset in the late 7th century, and the Cornish St. Hume, described as an abbess in the list, but about whom nothing is known for certain. And their presence is surely explained by Battle's strong links with Western Britain. Other saints attest to Battle's links with other English Benedictine houses. Uh, Northern Anglo Saxon saints, uh, Aidan, Acker, Cuthbert, and Woodford, feature prominently in groups together. Now, the relics uh, occur in a similar arrangement in several other English Benedictine infantries, including both Canterbury Houses and Durham Cathedral Priory. Now, the Cluniac uh, Abbey of Reading was founded in 1120 by Henry I, who made a generous gift of relics to his own um, foundation. Uh, they were even in the night is shown here. Battle and Reading were the only English religious foundations to have relics to St. Farron, 7th century Bishop of New in Paris, whose relics were translated in there in 1140. Likewise, uh, uh, likewise relics of Flavius, 6th uh, century Archbishop Martyr of uh, Rouen, are only found in the, the only English lists that are found in are Battle and Reading. Now, Reading was, of course, famous for its uh, relic of the arms of James the Great. And the greatest of all pilgrimage sites in Western Europe was the Shrine of Compostela in northern Spain. Relics of the saint were widespread, appearing in, I think, two thirds of English medieval inventories. But the number of relics of St. James uh, at, at battle is quite striking. They're listed on the first folio, there are fragments of his clothing part of his head, the pillar upon which he was martyred, and a fragment of his tomb, that's where you expect them, whether with the apostles. Um, James's relics appear on two other occasions in the inventory as well. The final one, in the section that lacks a hierarchical arrangement, possibly suggesting that the abbey was continuing to acquire relics of this great saint. Indeed, it's surely no coincidence that we know that Abbot Alan Kettling of Mattel made the pilgrimage to Santiago in 1330-1331. And this may also explain why the Abbey had a very large number of other Spanish saints, some unique to the monastery in England. These include the relics of St. Dominic, described as an abbot, and this is surely St. Dominic of Silos. He died in 1073. His body translated to the church of his monastery, where it became the focus of a cult and pilgrimage. There's also uh, a bone of St. Eulogius of Cordoba, and Battle also possessed the relic of St. Sancho, described as a bishop. Now, I struggled to identify this child, I have Tom Nixon's event to this. They can possibly be identified as St. Sancho, and I apologise for my poor Spanish pronunciation as well. Uh, uh, I think that's St. Sancho of Funes. Benedictine abbot of Najara and the later bishop of Calahora, who was martyred in 1146, his relics um, subsequently the focus of uh, veneration and cult and pilgrimage. Now, pilgrimage was a rare treat for monks. They spent long hours each day in church singing the divine office, the eight daily services that punctuate the monastic day. So, was there a relationship between the battle relics and the saints honoured in the Abbey's daily liturgy? 
Well, analysis of this question is hampered by this poor survival of the technical books from the manuscript. Only a single volume of this type, a scrappy paper breviary of around about 1500, survives, and even that's fragmentary of Lattice's calendar. However, the offices of saints is more or less intact, and there are a total of 113 saints with offices or commemorations. And you won't be surprised that the two feasts of Martin, the 4th of July and the 7th of November, are both there with feasts of 12 elections, the very highest rating, so too the feasts of St. Nicholas. However, for the most part, there's no discernible relationship between the radicalists and the feasts. There's an approximately 50 50 split. And disappointingly, or at least disappointingly for me, none of the rare Spanish or British saints who relics with the Abbey were apparently commemorated in the liturgy. But there is, however, some evidence that uh, the, uh, the veneration of battle relics extended beyond the walls of the community. In the early 12th century, the Bishop of Chichester granted an indulgence to, visit to pilgrims who visited battle to venerate its relics. The miracles that occurred there during the rule of Abbot Walter de Lacy in the mid 12th century were also said to have attracted pilgrims. And the sacrist accounts from the early 16th century recall oblations on the Feast of Relics that's kept at battle and looking at the, um, the, the, the other feasts in, in, in the uh, uh, breviary at some point between the 2nd and 4th of May on seven separate occasions alone in the 1520s and 1530s. And as late as 1532, a bequest was made to the Thurgetry of St. Benignus at Battle, the saint's altar, a popular focus for burials and offerings. So what of the uh, reliquary itself? According to the Abbey's late 12th century chronicle, Abbot Ralph, who ruled between 1107 and 1124, commissioned the Thurgetry, a wonderful work of gold and silver set with precious jewels to provide a a suitably magnificent setting for the Abbey's relics. Well, the relics in the 15th century of England are described as being contained in a phylactery made of gold and shining gems. And then that's about as much as we can say um, about it, unfortunately. I'll conclude where I ended, where I'm sorry, I'll conclude where I ended, where, where, I'll conclude where I began with the suppression of battle. Heard only the, as, as, as a well known scene from Fox's Book of Martyrs, where we see official view of the English Reformation. But I hope to some extent I challenge that. I hope I show the enduring spiritual and material riches of battle. The poor state of the vestry of the monastery in 1535 surely had nothing to do with lack of investment by the monks. It was probably the case that the community had hidden or sold their vestments prevent them from falling into the hands of the royal commissioners. And we know this is happening at houses across the realm. But what are the relics that play such an important role in the history of the monastery and have shaped its identity? Well, as is well known, reformers purposefully targeted relics for mockery and destruction. Indeed, some scholars have argued that a major motive for the suppression wasn't just the religious life practice within them, but was a, the, the, the monster's role as a custodian of relics. Battle's precious metal furiture surely contributed to the over 2,000 ounces of plate sent from the monastery when the abbey finally came down in 1538 to the king's jewel house at the tower. Henry didn't show any regard for the abbey's spiritual riches, but he certainly treasured its material riches, and that of other monasteries as well. Indeed, to such an extent, I'm going to leave you with this rather melancholy image, the rather beautiful 14th century incense bow and um, uh, censer from, possibly from Ramsey Abbey. If it is indeed from Ramsey Abbey, it represents the sum total of English medieval monastic plate that has survived. Thank you very much. Thank you.